happy that you have joined with us this morning. Whether you're part of our family or you're a new friend, welcome. If you're on Facebook, it's so good to have you. YouTube or on our website, we pray this morning you'll have an expectant heart. It says that our expectation is His invitation. And my prayer is that you will be so expectant to receive a word of faith this morning that it will infuse you with courage for the week ahead. If you have any prayer requests or you want to reach out to us, you can do so on info at solidrock.com. We would love to hear from you. And as we enter into a time of worship, my prayer is that you won't be a spectator, but that you'll be a participator, that you will join in and you will help us to lift up the name of Jesus, the name above every name, so that we can declare that He is going to get us through this difficult time and we're going to come out stronger than ever before. Thank you so much. We love you and we are praying for you. Amen. is changing and uncertain. A thousand directions we could go, but in times of change, there is one constant, one with no shadow of turning. It's His call that leads us to the light and through the darkness into the places we should go. And it's His call that compels us to choose hope and to choose love. So now, Solid Rock, we go forward boldly. Hearts alive for such a time as this. Hearts alive for the community to which we are called. Hearts inspired by our one and true Savior, Jesus Christ. Solid Rock, this is home. Welcome everyone. Can you believe this is our eighth Sunday in a row? of being a part yet still you're allowing us to come live into your living room on mother's day what an incredible honor thank you i pray that today is going to be an amazing day for you for your family as we celebrate together this is a great day and we're serving a great god who is worthy of all of our praise so let's begin to celebrate and to elevate the name of Jesus Christ. Father, on this Lord's Day, on this Mother's Day, we invite your presence, we invite your anointing, and we pray for joy unspeakable and full of glory. Let the riches of God flow into our lives in Christ's name. Amen, amen. Come on, let's worship the King of Kings this morning. Let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. And let it rise. Let praise arise We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything Yes it does, we sing with all we are and claim your victory Lord let it arise Let our praise arise Alright, come on y'all, sing it out We'll see you break down every wall We'll watch the giant God of 
I want you to hold on to the very presence of God Almighty in your living room wherever you are he said that he would be with us he would be with you no matter what you're going through no matter the scenario the presence of God is with you right now not only is he a historical figure he's our eternal contemporary the one who walks every single day of our lives with us how comforting and because of that we don't have to fear we don't have to fear the unknown and we don't have to fear what appears to be intimidating on the surface we can trust him so this morning beloved trust him cast yourself upon him ask God to meet you right where you're at in the place of loneliness in the place of personal pain in the place of emptiness and isolation invite his presence would you do that invite his presence into that point of need father I thank you for this very opportunity that you've extended to us to meet every need to reveal your greatness to show forth your faithfulness God today in the place of confusion and in the place of loneliness would your Holy Spirit come to fill every heart we're not afraid to approach your throne because you've invited us to do that we're not afraid to share with you our needs because you've asked us to do that and so Lord I fasten my faith with every single person that's watching today wherever they are in this incredible world of yours would you show them that you are an ever faithful God and I thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and everyone said amen and amen you know I cannot I cannot express my appreciation to you 
for truly opening up your homes and your hearts as we come and bring the, the message of Christ and the presence of the Lord through our, our gathered singing and sharing together. What a journey it has been these past eight weeks. And with every passing week, we have all felt the strengthening of God, the fortifying of the Lord. As we've lived through something that really has been so amazing, so crazy, and really the first time in modern history. But we're getting through it, aren't we? Each day, with each step, we're getting through it with the help of the Lord. And it's just going to be a couple weeks from now, on Sunday, May 24th, when we're going to gather together on campus, live on the lawn, for our first in-person on-campus experience. And I'm excited about that. I want to encourage you to check out our transition plan with all of the details on our website, solidrock.com. We've laid that out. I want to tell you from a pastor's heart that you approach that day or any day that you choose to come back on campus in a way that brings the greatest amount of peace to your heart. We want you to be absolutely comfortable when you make your journey back to our shared space and place together. I want you to know that no guilt, no pressure, but we are looking forward to seeing you and experiencing the vibe together. So thank you so very much. I want you to know that today is a special day because it's a day in which we honor mothers. And mothers, we want to celebrate you. The Bible says to give honor to whom honor is due. And I just pray that this day would exceed your expectations. Maybe the love of a family gathering together. Maybe that conversation will take place over the internet, FaceTime, Facebook, Zoom, whatever you're using. May those conversations with your loved ones warm your heart and comfort your soul. Friend, we're in this together. We're in it to win it. And I'm so grateful to you. Our team's gonna come and we're going to once again press in to the presence of the Lord. Those of you who are watching Solid Rock for the first time, we are a people who believe in the presence of God. We love the presence of God. We invite the Holy Spirit to come because He is God with us. And so as we press in, our team's going to sing that song, The Blessing. It's right out of Numbers chapter 6. It's taken from the Word of God. We're going to sing the Word of God. And we're going to accept and embrace the blessings of the Lord. So once again, Open your heart and let's see what God is going to do. Yes, Jesus, we believe it, we believe it. Just open your heart and begin to receive that. Lord, we receive the blessings that you have for us today, God. Yes, we do. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make His face shine upon and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. Come on, let's all sing that again. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make His face shine upon and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. I 
as we sing it so be it. We sing Amen. 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 Oh, the Lord bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. May His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. Oh, we sing Amen, Amen, Amen to me, God. Oh. their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning
God, we're clinging on to that promise, that blessing. Lord, that you are blessing us. You're blessing our families. You're blessing our children. You're blessing their children and their children's children, God. Lord, we're clinging on to that, Lord, that you have so much in store for us. As the saying is, is the best is yet to come. God, we don't know what today or tomorrow may bring, but we are gonna bring greatness to your kingdom. Father, we are kingdom builders today, God. We just pray, Lord, that that blessing just begins to overflow and to overflow in us, in our hearts, in our lives, God, that we become shining lights for you. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. And most of all, God, we worship you because there is something beautiful in worship. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, moms, today is your day. It's a day to say thank you for loving us, caring for us, and guiding us. It's a day to recognize all you do and all you are to us, your perfect, wonderful, amazing children. Thanks for all the early mornings and for taking care of the things we take for granted. Thanks for never giving up on us, even when we stress you out. Thanks for making sure we have what we need and for giving us your heart even when you're sick and tired. Thanks for working hard even when we're a handful and for loving us unconditionally when our attitude is anything but lovable. You're our everything, Mom, and we'd be a mess without you. Today, we thank God for the wonderful gift of you. Happy Mother's Day. Dan and I are so excited about the incredible privilege that you've extended to us in allowing us to come into your home on this Mother's Day. In fact, uh, as we gather here, I want you to know that this is going to be something different in which we are sharing our hearts with you. We're kind of calling it a mother's perspective. I'm going to uh, lend some, some thoughts as we journey through this together, but thank you. You know, I know my wife and Dana would much rather lead and serve in anonymity and obscurity rather than in the bright lights and on a platform. But she was really excited about doing that. And I know that she's going to be able to share some things that will encourage some moms and those of you that are watching today. But before we move on, and I have Dana just share some of her thoughts with you, I want to let every one of you that are watching, that Mother's Day is a day of, of glee, a day of gladness for a certain segment and for a goodly amount. It's a day of celebration. But for others, Mother's Day is a, is a day of sadness, a day of pain a day of loneliness, a day filled with questions of what ifs and if only. I want you to know that, that we understand. For those of you who have experienced the, the unexpected loss of a loved one, we feel your pain. We're with you. It may have been a young child. It may have been an older child, but today you're watching and you feel the, the claw of that pain in your heart. Maybe you have wanted a child and have been unable to become pregnant. And Mother's Day is hard for you, we understand. Or maybe you're at a place where you're missing your mother and it cries out from the very depths of your soul. We love you. So while we want to celebrate Mother's Day, we're not ignorant, nor are we insensitive to what you may be going through. We love you. Dan and I love you and we care for you. Maybe Dana, you just want to just speak a little bit from your heart and with our people. 
Well, wherever you are on your journey as a woman, I want you to know that sometimes it's easy to give in to fear and worry, but God can give you strength. And He can lead you on to most wonderful things. And the scripture that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, is a great one to have on your tongue in, in your speaking out and speaking out the word to have that in your heart because his strength will carry you through. Yes, yes, thanks, Daniel. Let's pray. Could I pray over you? Father, as we gather together on this Sunday of Mother's Day, I ask for just a, a rich sense of your comfort and your strength. I ask for the undergirding of your spirit to really shore up the hearts and the lives of those that may be grieving today. I just pray your mantle, your covering, and the fortifying of your spirit over every single individual that may be feeling the lostness and the loneliness and the isolation that comes about on Mother's Day. So we pray special grace and special protection. And we thank you now, Lord, for these moments. And we will give them to you and ask them to use it for your glory. In Jesus Christ's wonderful name, amen and amen. Well, Dana, this is a first for us. This is something that, that we felt would be perhaps new and fresh. And so, dear ones, I want you just to, to listen in. I want you to be encouraged because Dan and I have seen God do some amazing things. So today, Dan, there are some that are, are watching that, that have seen our children grow up. You and I have been here over 17 years. They've watched our, our kids grow. But I suspect that there's a vast majority of those that are watching that really don't know our kids very well. Why don't you just kind of introduce our, our kids to our family and friends? Okay. When Jay and I first uh, were engaged, we would talk about how many children we wanted to have. Well, Jay said he wanted three. And I said I wanted four. Well, actually, the first thing Jay said, how many, I said, how many children do you want? And he says, aren't I enough? <laughs> and I'm like, no. <laughs> but we ended up with five. So I think that's pretty good. It is. And those kids have been such a blessing to our lives. Dana, why don't you just maybe um, introduce each one of them and just take a moment to do that. Okay. Jason was our firstborn, and he's the guinea pig, I guess. Uh, first child, the most pictures than any of the other children, as any of your families know. Um, he was about three, I guess, two and a half, three. On a Sunday night, we had a service. Jay and I both drove to that service. I went home first, and then Jay came home. And I said, Jay, where's Jason? I thought he was bringing him. Well, Jay, Jay said, he's not with me. So we went back to the church, and Jason was sleeping on the front pew in pitch black, fast asleep. <laughs> and he was also the child that would beat on things. Not being damaging, but just keep the rhythm going. He was constantly doing rhythms uh, with pencils, with, with his fork and his knife at dinner. He was driving us crazy. Yes. But you know what? That developed into an excellent drummer. Yes. And so there are things that are going to irritate you at times, but it may be something that's going to build in their life as a skill or, or, or a character um, quality. Jamie is our second child. She was our nurturer. She um, helped me a lot with the babies, like we call them. Savannah and Shailen were always called the babies. They were the last two. And Jamie, even at age four, was changing dirty diapers for me from the babies, Savannah and Shailen. So she was uh, great at that. And, but now she's going into the medical field. 
And I can see that. We, as, as we look back, we can see yes. that that was just God's will for her. Seth is our third. He's the redhead. He is our contemplative child, meaning he thinks about things a lot. And if you asked him a question, he would think about it before he really blurted out an answer. Uh, he was an adventurer. Yes, he was. But um, if we were in a big group, more than likely, he was not playing with the other children. He would be over in the corner somewhere talking to another adult. He was a great listener, and he would just have good conversations with them. He was a curious one, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Savannah, our fourth child, was my miracle baby. Well, she, the birth was fine. The second night home from the hospital, she slept through the night. And I love that too. Yeah. <laughs> well, I woke up that morning and it was light outside and it scared me because I knew she hadn't cried. She hadn't woken me up. And so I ran over to the bathroom. That's where we had her bassinet in. And she was just sound asleep, just sleeping away and kept going that way. She didn't go back. She didn't wake up for feedings or anything. Um, but anyway, now she's still a sleeper. She loves to she sleep. She loves to sleep. And if sleep. you try to wake her up in the middle of the night for something important, she's crazy. I mean, she'll, she'll start talking in her sleep. What are you doing? You know. It's quite funny, actually. I recorded it one time. Uh, Shaylin, we always called her Smiling Shaylin. Um, she would be in her little bouncer or laying down in a car seat. No matter what, she was smiling away. And even now, she loves to laugh. And she loves to laugh loud, if you've noticed. So those are our children, and we're very proud of them. You know, Dan, I noticed that you were sharing with our, our family and friends that, that between the two of us, I wanted three, you wanted four. And we, end up, we ended up exceeding um, what we had planned for. So all I can say, you must, have had a, you must have an incredible husband. Exceeded all of your expectations, right? Absolutely. And I went 45 months in, in being pregnant. I know that. So I think and that exceeds. She's yeah. a hero mom, you know. <laughs> I, um, you know, in this time together, family, we just want to kind of open up our hearts to you, maybe share some of the things along the journey that we've learned. Um, there were challenges for sure. There were occasions in which we shed a lot of tears, but there were also some humorous times. In fact, a goodly amount of humorous times. And I, I've asked Anna to share maybe a couple of those uh, humorous moments and experiences that we look back on even now and just uh, laugh with, with great excitement and joy. Mm -hmm. um. Jay's parents had come to visit. Seth was three years old, and she was doing some laundry for me. She was pulling things out of the dryer, and we had, Jay had bought a very large dryer and washer, because, you know, with all the kids. And um, so there was a sock in the back of the dryer, and she didn't want to have to bend over and <laughs> get it. And so she said, Seth, would you please get that sock for me. And he said, okay. So he stuck his head, took it. Stuck. Stuck his head. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> he stuck his head into the dryer and was almost all the way in. And he came back out and he said, I'll be back soon. And then he goes back in and gets the, the sock. So that's one of those <laughs> things we remember. It's so funny. Another one, which we kind of think it's funny now, but at the time it was scary. Jason was not quite three. Jay's mom was there at the same time. And uh, she was out on the porch. Um, I was pregnant with Jamie. And I had to go back into the house. And I told Jay's mom, I said, watch him. You know, he's two and a half, but watch him. Um, we lived um, in a house that had woods all around. So, and it was a long driveway. And a long driveway. Yeah. It was 1,600 feet. About 1,600 feet. That's right. And it was all woods. There was no, you couldn't see anything. 
till you got to the highway. Well, I came back out in five minutes. I said, where's Brayson? I mean, <laughs> Jason, where's Jason? And she said, well, he was just here. I don't know. So I looked all around the wooded area, didn't see a little red shirt. I ran back inside and <laughs> grabbed my keys. Jay wasn't there. And I went to the car and I started down the driveway all the way down. I was about 20 feet from the end, and Jason was coming back with a newspaper under his arm and the dog with him. We had a, a dog called Jubilee. And I said, Jason, what are you doing? He said, I needed to get the newspaper. So this so, little fella all by himself walked all the way down the driveway um, and was just sauntering back up as if nothing happened. It really was a very scary moment for Dano at the time. But, you know, that was Jason. He just had a mind of his own. He wanted to, to do his own thing. Mm -hmm. You know, Dana, I think it'd be good because we've got lots of moms, young and older moms watching, and, and our older moms who have lived through this can identify with all of the ups and downs. But, you know, over the years and with our children, what were some of the, the biggest adjustments that you had to make? Um, I remember some of those adjustments that I had to make um, as a new dad, but I wasn't the one that was with Dan with the kids all of the time. So, Dana, share what maybe some of those big adjustments were that you had to experience. Well, the first adjustment was just having a baby um, living in your house. I remember distinctly when Jason was two months old that the thought came into my head, this is permanent. There's no spring break and there's no summer vacation on this. This is permanent. And um, so I had to buckle down and, and just keep going with it and I was fine. But um, another one, another adjustment was when we went from two to three kids. Um, with two kids, you have two parents, you have two kids. That fits right together. But when you had that third one, it became a little more challenging. And uh, when you have four or five, it's about the same, and you can might as well have 10 <laughs> because that's, your life is consumed. <laughs> that's true. That's true. But you know, Dana, you handled that well. well. <laughs> you know, Dana was also the oldest of um, four siblings, and I think five, five, the five, five of us. you, but you're the oldest. And I think that that really helped to acclimate you too, you know, condition you because you really became a second mom to, to your, your siblings. And I think that was a beautiful way of helping to prepare you to be the mother of five kids. And one adjustment you had to make, I remember, because before children, I was all in with the ministry. I was at the church. I was involved. I was with you all the time. Um, but when we had a child or two or three, I had to back out, back away from that some. And so Jay felt that. I did. And in fact, you know, I, I realized that I was holding a little bit of resentment, um, not really towards the kids. Obviously, they, they had no choice, but because I was feeling that, that vacuum, the absence of Dana, I was feeling that and became a little resentful. And it was something that we had to work through and something that we had to, to talk through. But eventually I came to understand that Dana was doing um, the most noble duty in looking after our kids. You know, this October, Dana, will be our 33rd year of marriage. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just gone by so fast. And watching God just take us through the, the varying seasons of our lives. So I've watched Dana. I've watched her up close. I've watched Dana in varying circumstances. And if there was one word that I had to employ to describe Dana, normally I would say it would be patience. And that's true of Dana. And all of the kids would say that about Dana. In fact, just the other day while we were having family dinner together, Shailen said, Dana's the most patient mom in the world. 
And it really is true. And I was thinking about our time together. I said, if there was one word that I had to use to describe Dana, it would be the word consistency. Because Dana, you are consistently patient. You are consistently humble. She's consistently faithful. Oh, wait a minute. I'm not perfect. I'm just a... No, you're not perfect. But, I am uh, a work in progress, just like a lot of us are. Well, you're, you're a lot further along than I am. No, but, no, no, but, no. You know, she would, be, she would be consistent. She'd be consistently serving, whether it was her family or whether it was her church. But over the years, I've seen Dano in multiple roles. And one of the things that I saw that really emerged in Dana was her quiet strength. And I don't know, Dana, if a lot of people know this side of our, our lives. Maybe some in our, our church family. But I, it's something we don't talk about a great deal. But why don't you just share about that day in which you went uh, to your doctor and specifically to your OBGYN. I, I think that may encourage some that may be watching here. After Jason um, was 18 months or so, we became pregnant again, and we were very excited. And so I was feeling great. Now, with Jason, I was sick. Um, but I was just feeling really energetic. And so I um, went to the doctor, regular visit. I should have been three months. And... Um, Got there, and the doctor said after a little bit, we need to do an ultrasound. And so, went into the ultrasound room. The sonographer was there. And she was working on it, on that. And under her breath, I heard her say the word multiples. And then she said, let me see the doctor. So, she left the room. Well, I'm lying there, and I said, I am going to get up, and I'm going to look at this monitor and see what she saw. And I looked at the monitor, and I saw two little circles together um, that were twins, and they had not developed. And that's why he wanted to do an ultrasound, because he knew that I wasn't as far as long as I should have been. Um, so, from that moment, you know, I, we, we, I went back home. It was not a very good day. Um, the next day was bad. I had a, a procedure on the third day. Um, I was very down. But, you know, right after that, I was good. I was fine. Um, went on with my life, all my responsibilities. Um, Several months went by. It was about a almost, year, wasn't it? Almost yeah. about a year. It was year. about a year. And I woke up one morning, and it's like the lights came on. My eyes were opened. Everything was brighter. I had a better attitude. And I didn't realize it, but I think I was in a mild depression that year. I didn't realize it. And I don't know if anyone else would have noticed but um, I just thank God for taking me through that and letting me um, come through that. You know, Dan, as I, as I look, think back, you know, I remember you telling me that you think that you had gone through a, a period of depression. Because I remember our conversation about it. I don't remember all of the details, but I remember you saying to me, I think that I've been in a depression. Um, it wasn't overly obvious to me, but obviously you felt that, mm -hmm. you know, the way to that. Well, especially when I came out of it, it was like, whoa, life is different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she just handled it so well. And, you know, a part of me felt a little guilty for not recognizing that or not being more sensitive to Dana. The miscarriage, I could tell, was heavy upon her. And I felt the sadness and the sorrow of it but it didn't impact me as deeply. And I, I felt a little guilty about that, um, but I also felt a sense of guilt that I, I did not more recognize 
that in Dana and the weight that she was, was carrying. But thank God that he brought her through that. And we have two babies in heaven. Yes. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be fun to see them. Mm-hmm. Look mm-hmm. forward to them. You know, Dana, I got to tell you, and I, I know, you know, I don't want to, to embarrass you or make you feel a little uncomfortable. But over the years, I've watched you serve in multiple roles as a woman, and then as a wife, and then as a mother, and then as a pastor's wife. And on top of that, I saw you uh, both at the church in Macon and here at Solid Rock um, step into the music ministry position and to lead that. And then I watched you in your role as, as a friend to people. And I was amazed in how you were able to, to juggle that um, you know, you know, Dan, I know this is not comfortable for you, but how did you juggle all of those roles? Maybe, you know, I know there, there's, there's wives, there's moms, there's moms that are working, there are moms that are involved in ministry here and in community activities, and you're trying to juggle all of those varying roles and responsibilities and this work-life balance thing. How did you do that? Would you maybe just like to share a little bit, perhaps, of maybe some of your thoughts? Well, um, women have many hats. You can say you're a mother, but actually you're a chauffeur, you're the cook, you're the cleaner, you're the everything else that goes with that. And we take that as other hats. Uh, First thing, you have to depend on God and pray. Pray a lot, but you don't stay there. You have to plan. And you have to prepare. So that's a good sermon. It is a good Pray, sermon. Pray, plan, and prepare. Okay. You ready to preach no, that next no, Sunday? No, no, no. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you control what you can, but then you relax with the rest of the stuff. Um, sometimes there's going to be surprises and, and mess up all that you've planned. Well, we don't want fires in our house. We, no one wants to have a, a house fire. But you have a plan if something were to happen. And um, th- surprises are going to hap- happen. But also we need to have an emotional reaction plan. It's true. Go ahead and think about if something were to happen, what's going, what, is, what is your reaction going to be? And make it be a positive reaction. Your children are watching you, and they're going to react just like you. It's true. They're going to learn it. It's so, so true, Dana. You know, um, one of the things that, that Dan and I did very early on, um, we made a decision that children were going to be a part of our lives and our ministry. We wanted to enfold them um, to the nth degree possible. It wasn't going to be my job, my vocation, my profession. It was going to be something that Dan and I shared together, and we did that. And so when we had kids together, we we adopted the mentality that our kids are going to do ministry with us, and to whatever level they wanted to get involved with, they could do that. And you know, Dana, looking back, and our kids being involved in ministry today, you know, I'm so grateful. I am so grateful that it became very natural for them, you know, and, um, and thank God for that. Church for us wasn't optional, and church for our kids weren't optional. Wednesday nights, they were going to be in church. Sunday morning, Sunday night, they were going to, to be in church. And you know, moms and dads, make a decision that your kids are going to be in church with you. And for that to happen, you're going to have to make that commitment that church is going to be priority and that you model that for them. I, I, I think that's critical. Any, yes. any thoughts? Um, to go on, there was another thought I had that as a mother, you are wanting to be 100% as a mother. And you're all gung-ho. You're all in. But 100% doesn't mean that you use up all your energy, all your emotions, or all your time. You need to invest in your marriage. It's not just motherhood alone or marriage alone. 
You've got both. It's good. It's good. Okay. So uh, Jay, you, knowing me and how busy I would be with all the kids, uh, sometimes he would uh, call me or tell me the next day or say, now be sure to keep some reserve in the tank for me. Well, <laughs> that meant that we were going to go on dates. We were going to share. But you have to keep that emotional energy for sharing and also for your intimate moments. So it's very important. Um, the best thing you can do for your children is to love their father, your husband. You know, I remember um, I knew that Dana would be with the kids all day and I'd come home after a full day at the office and church or meeting with people. And there was a period of time in which Dana immediately wanted to hand off the kids to me. And I remember at one point in our conversation, it was creating some conflict in our marriage. And I said, Dana, would you please give me at least 30 minutes of downtime when I can get home, just so that I can orient myself? And Dana was, was very kind to provide that, that margin for us. I don't know if you recall that, yes, I but do. it was very, very helpful to our marriage relationship. Yeah, well, he was able to regroup. He had a busy day at the church meetings. Uh, when he got home, he needed to regroup, to rest a little bit, um, and he was a better dad for it. He, he had Thank more you. energy and um, a better husband. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you know, Dan, I want maybe if you could just, um, as, we, as we draw closure to our time together with, with our family, um, is there maybe a couple of pieces of, of advice that you would just like to share with the moms that are watching or moms-to-be that uh, are, are watching us today? Well, I wrote down three things that I, to keep in mind. Um, know your limits. Don't overextend yourself. And don't have false expectations. Yeah. You might make a list of 30 items on the list. Um, prioritize the ones that you have to get done. And then there are some that are important. But you don't have to get everything done That's on right. the list. Save your energy. And you need to take care of yourself. You know what revives you, whether it's a, just a nap or if it's going shopping, whatever it is, you need to take care of yourself. The second thing is pick your passions. Uh, we have many different interests. And I know like you get on Pinterest and you see all these DIY projects. You don't need 30 projects going at one time. Simplify. There is time for everything. And there's a season for everything. And right now your life is busy with children. Um, and so just be careful with that. Hobby Lobby will be waiting for you. <laughs> and the third thing is to be flexible. When things don't go as planned, for example, if you have interruptions, it's true. you're headed on a mission, but you get a phone call and you're irritated. That phone call is important. That person's important. God may put that person in front of you. And Jesus was interrupted, it's and true. he ministered, went on his way to go to places that he wanted to minister. He was interrupted on the way. That's true. And so we need to be like Jesus. That's true. Well, Dana, thank you. Thank you. And, you know, family and friends, thank you. I, I know this is, you know, way outside of our box and something that... Um, we don't do very often, but it was kind of fun, Dana, for us to kind of share together. We wanted to maybe encourage you on Mother's Day just to drop some seeds or some gems that perhaps you could hold on to and find strength and encouragement from. I, I do want to let you know that parenting is not a science. Parenting is, in, is, is something that we don't uh, move towards perfection in. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to strive to be the very best parent that we can. Um, we never perfect parenting. We practice it. We practice that. So today, friend, whatever you're going through, maybe some of you as parents are really struggling and feeling like you failed or that you're going through a season of incredible frustration and resentment. 
I want you to know, moms, that, that your work, that your role is a most noble role. It's a God-given gift that can only be filled by you. And then I want to just pray over you. We want to just believe God with you and for you. And we're here to encourage and to resource in any way that we can. So would you just bow your hearts with us as we pray over you this morning on this Mother's Day? Father, I thank you that Dan and I can just agree together for our church family and for those that are watching. Lord, you know every individual, every heart and every burden. And this very moment, God, I pray for a special endowment of your favor and your wisdom and your anointing. There may be a mom out there that's really struggling, feeling lost and feeling so alone. May you be the canopy of grace. May you be the source of strength. And Father, would you give this mom what it takes to make it through another day. She will see the light at the end of the tunnel and she will feel the breath of heaven upon their hearts and upon their face. So Dan and I agree right now together in the name that is above every name that Father, this day will be a day of shifting and a day of breakthrough in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. From our hearts to yours, happy Mother's Day.